lovers and welcome to another one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings. Now, I say whiskey rambling, but that's a bit of a misnomer because this is not about whiskey, this is about gin. As you know, Manny and I have recently started the uh, m and project, which is Mark and Manny's Malts. But while the third cask has not yet been found, the search is still ongoing, we thought, hey, summer is at hand. It's time for not a malt, but a malt alternative. And we turned to our Dutch friend Erik Molenaar of Wagging Finger Distillery because he has recently launched a brand new gin, Wagging Finger, and we tasted it and we thought, this is exactly yeah. the kind of quality that we want for our alternative, our summary interludium. And hence, we came to Erik and we asked him, could we please have, not your gin of course, because your gin is yours, we wanted our own recipe, but of course we turned to him because he's the professional. And we talked, we thought, we need a quality gin a, a worthy alternative as an interludium for the whiskies. So, Eric, what have you uh, been putting together for us? I've put something together for you guys that is exceptionally good. Exceptionally good. Gin wow. is all about botanicals. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, the amount of botanicals you use in your gin determines the flavor, the scent, and the aromas, and the mouthfeel. So if you're, uh, if you're cheap on botanicals, you get a mediocre gin. Go big with your botanicals and you get big flavors. So when you look in front here, there's a selection of botanicals we've used in this recipe. Gin is based on juniper. So we've got a nice amount of juniper berries, the juniper berries that make up the bigger part of the flavor, the texture of your gin. Mm -hmm. and then there's uh, cardamom, there's uh, coriander seeds, there's cubeb pepper, there's uh, uh, orange peel, there's uh, uh, citrus peel, even some cinnamon. It's a warm feeling in the back of your throat. Mm -hmm. And we've made it a classic profile for you guys. This is a classic profile gin. No shenanigans, just your basic yes. juniper based gin. Exactly what we were looking for. Nice. Alright, good. Well, and it has not been chill filtered. No chill filtered. And it has been bottled at uh, 44%. Good. 44%. So, not chill filtered, not cut or anything. This is at 44% unchill filtered, which means that all the flavors and all the texture yeah. remains intact. And all the oils are still in there, and it's the oils that make the flavor and give you the Great mouth here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When diluted with a little tonic ice for the water, it may turn a little cloudy, but that's proof that all the all the oils that we put in there, the painstakingly put in with our, 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 our still in the, in the back there, uh, are still in there, and you get the, the, the best expression of, uh, of your okay. juniper. Well, well, we'll give that gin and tonic, that summary gin and tonic, a try in a few moments. But first, let's try the, the, uh, yeah. the, the because I have been told that it is very drinkable, neat as it well. Is, it is, it is. So. The proof is in the pudding, on the nose. So indeed, I get these, these it's juniper driven, yeah. it's juniper yeah. driven, but the citrus is clearly there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And there is this, this spiciness. Yeah, that's from the pepper. Yeah, the Cuba pepper we use in there as well. It has a minty, peppery character. Good. Especially in the aftertaste. Uh -huh. Well, speaking of taste, that's that's awesome. there you go. Mm. Mm. This is, this is good. <laughs> Try this neat, get a big glass ice, and get some lemon zest or get some uh, orange mm -hmm. zest in it, and sip this on a warm summer evening instead yeah. of your malt, which is not, not really for the hot exactly. summer evenings. Exactly, exactly. Or in your, in your perfect syrup, your gin and tonic. Add some, a good neutral tonic, add some uh, uh, botanicals you use in the, uh, in the gin itself. Mm -hmm. I always use three or four crushed juniper berries yeah. in my gin and tonic, so you enhance the flavor of the juniper, and then you can play with it. One more herbal character, and a twig of rosemary. There's no rosemary in the mix here, but a twig of rosemary brings out the herbal character. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to enhance the citrus flavors, some orange peel, some lemon peel, so you can experiment and create yeah. your own create your, create your own perfect serve. Yeah. We don't mm -hmm. want to determine for you how to drink this gin gin. Mm -hmm. uh, experiment. But this is Back to basics, it is, it is honest. It is. Yep. Yep. No, yep. No, no, what you see is what you get. No, no, no. Yeah. And it's got this beautiful mouth coating creaminess yeah. uh, in it. That's the oil. And it's, and it's yeah. clearly a, uh, in the back of the throat, you get this warm cinnamon feeling. Yeah. This is exactly what we were looking for. And we are very happy that you were uh, you know, able and willing yeah. to uh, help us to uh, 
create this interludium gin and interludium of course refers to the fact that it's a musical term and you have these big musical pieces and sometimes there is this small little resting piece in the middle and that is called interludium and that's the idea behind this gin this is our first batch and we went back to the Heimat of yeah. gin we went to Holland to uh, the Venter where we found uh, Eric Mollenaar from Magic Finger Distillery now if you want to try his gin as well do so. It is a bit different from this one, obviously, but both are very nice uh, gins. But if you'll excuse us, of course, we have them. <laughs> this is about the interludium gin, yeah. so let's not go there. This is more than enough, right? So, thank you, and uh, no, just kidding. But, uh, so, pure, neat. This is a very drinkable gin, very creamy, very mouth coating, a bit warming. So, this is, this is very, this is lovely. Thank this you. is exactly this is what we were looking for. Yeah. This is the quality that we were looking for. So, I'm very happy that we have a, a neat, drinkable gin. But, when you say gin, when you say summer, you have to go for a gin and tonic. Eric, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. pleasure. And we will be back, I'm we'll sure of it, yeah, sure. Uh, for you. another recipe. Um, but this is our gin, and now we're going to try a gin and tonic. Yeah. Cheers. Welcome back. What you just saw were pictures of the distillery in action producing the gin and uh, I would like to thank Ansgar and Thomas Speller for those uh, very cool pictures. Thank you Ansgar and Thomas from whiskeyspeller.nl um, Now we told you before, we tried it before neat and this gin is very drinkable at 44% ABV but we also promised to offer you the gin and tonic. And as you can see, Manny is not around. No, he had to leave because while driving down from the distillery back to our home base, we got a call with the lead, a possible third cask for Mark and Manny's malts might be available. So Manny said, I'll go check out that lead. I'll go try that malt. You go on and do the video for the, uh, the uh, gin and tonic. So here I am. Now, this is a basic uh, gin, like we said, back to basics, just the way we like it. So we don't need a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, we don't need a lot of stuff to put into our glass. We don't need it at all. What we have here is simply a lot of ice, obviously. I've got some, uh, some lemon and I've separated the peel from the flesh of the lemon. I'll explain why in a minute. And I got me some juniper berries, dried juniper berries. We don't need a lot of those. All we need is a lot of ice. What I usually do is uh, coat my, my glass with the ice by simply using a wrist movement. Isn't this? <laughs> Never mind. As soon as, uh, as you've cooled down your glass, there will be this film on the glass. What you need then is one of the 50 bottles of Mark and Manny's malts. And you put in five milliliters of the gin. So 
I use a jigger for that. Of course, you can do that from the wrist as well. And as you can see, this is five milliliters. And oh, what's that? And then everybody's looking that way. And then you simply add a little more. No harm done. So I've put in seven milliliters of the uh, Triple M gin, the Interludium gin. And what I prefer is um, the lemon separated from the peel. The lemon I simply drop into my gin. This will give it a nice, fresh, lemony, uh, slightly bitter, maybe even a uh, touch to my gin and tonic. But what I do with the, uh, the peel is I also use the peel, but I give that a little squeeze before I throw that into my glass. And then we take some juniper uh, berries as well, because the juniper berry, this gin, as you know, is juniper driven. So what I really like to do is add just a few juniper berries, not too many, just four or five of these juniper berries. Just grab a few and literally squeeze them between your fingers. Just crush them between your fingers. Oop, they're going all over the place. Looks like I'm not very handy, eh? There we go. And that's all you need. That's all you need. Obviously, a tonic as well. Now, this is a classic gin. I've said it before. I'll say it again, I'm sure. What I prefer for this one is a neutral tonic. So the fever tree, the regular fever tree, in my opinion, is actually the best to go with this uh, interludium gin. And all you need to do then is stir it for a moment. And what you get is a beautiful, no shenanigans, gin and tonic. Beautiful. Oh, I can already taste the summer. Can you? As you can see, it goes partly cloudy. It becomes a bit cloudy. And that has everything to do with the fact that our gin, the interludium gin, is not chill filtered so all the oils are still there and thus it becomes a bit cloudy there we go and that ladies and gentlemen that to me is the perfect serve not mint not anything not just basic 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 just a little bit of lemon juniper berries if you got them don't 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 hustle don't go out and buy them if you don't have them everybody's got a lemon in their fridge just use a lemon but make sure you have plenty of ice to cool down your tonic um, and basically that's all you need for this ultra summery drink and this one is coming soon to a bar near you don't forget the interludium gin is a small batch gin by Mark and Manny's malts it's our alternative for the summer while chasing down that next single malt non chill filtered and bottled at a drinking strength of 44% ABV. And that's all for this whiskey rambling, or I should say for this gin rambling, and I hope to see you again real soon at mmmmmalts.com or at one of Mark's whiskey ramblings. And until then, may the summer be with you. <laughs>